There's a great short story by Borges that I've mentioned before, uh, the Library of Babel, and that To Be Serious made a really great video about recently. And it's uh, it's, about, it's about this imaginary library which contains uh, all the possible all possible books, I suppose. It, uh, infinite galleries of books, at least anyway, infinite galleries containing bookshelves, all filled with books, and all of which seem to have the 26 characters of some alphabet arranged in every possible order with every possible letter and space combination. Uh, and in 2B Sirius's uh, video, she gave uh, some figures about at least, you know, indicating uh, something of the immensity of the numbers of books that would entail. It's just a vast number, absolutely vast, incomprehensibly vast. And the and it's in it's, and it's, it's the beauty of the story lies in the confrontation of that vastness, and it's and I think we're supposed to kind of read it as a, a as a story about as the search for meaning really in a in an infinite and incomprehensible universe, and in that story there are librarians who forever wander the shelves looking for books that contain even a suggestion of a meaningful sentence or even the suggestion of a few characters put together into a meaningful word. Uh, yeah, so as I say, it, 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 it reads like an allegory for that kind of search for meaning, really. Almost a religious search for meaning. Uh, but I've also also seen it not as a, um, an allegory about the universe, but as a kind of allegory for uh, the multiverse, if you like. I mean, there's no evidence that the multiverse really exists, but the multiverse is a, is a kind of parallel world theory of of the universe, that there isn't just this one world, this one universe that we find ourselves in, but this is just one of a, a very large series of very similar worlds, all supervenient upon one another, all coexisting, and all representing a slightly different collapsing of the state vector, as I think it's sometimes called. Uh... And so this infinite gallery of this infinite bookshelves and these infinite galleries in this infinite library, each containing slightly different variations of the same six characters, is kind of paralleled to the infinite number of or very large number of universes in the multiverse, each of which contains slightly different arrangements of of the the laws of that universe and the the matter and energy that's exchanged within that universe or in those universes. Okay, but how good an analogy is it, I suppose? That's that's my, would be my question. And I think there are some... You know, obviously, if the, if the number of universes in the multiverse was um, it correlated with the number of books in this infinite library, or had some kind of... It, if it's similar kinds of master in operation, then the number of multiverses would be just in, in, incredible. Uh... Because instead of the 26 characters, of course, there'd be every single atom and every single physical law um, and every single molecule or whatever, every single subatomic particle would have to be in the mix and it would just be incredible. Uh, but as I said, I'm not sure the, the allegory is accurate in that sense. Because the... Um, yeah, what would the, <laughs> just thinking what the correlation that would look like. You know, what would a multiverse in which anything that could ha anything could happen, all those combinate it was just combinatorial in the way these books are just combinatorial. They're just about combinations of, of of characters randomly on pages. It, what would the universe be like? What would what kinds of multiverse would exist? I mean, if you were to give it that degree of uh, flexibility, you would have to say that somewhere there's a a version of the universe which is exactly like ours. Except, uh, except there's a statue on Mars of the amazing atheist made out of chocolate. That would have to exist because it's a one possible combination of matter. So therefore, it'd have to exist in the multiverse. There would be one like that, and then there'd be another one which is exactly the same. It's got this statue on Mars of the amazing atheist made out of chocolate. Except this time he's wearing a hat, and then there'd be another one which is slightly taller, and another one with a bird perched on his shoulder, and another one in. In which case, it's dark chocolate rather than milk chocolate. You know, all these combinations would have to um, would have to exist 
and you can just kind of spin out the infinite variabilities of that. One where he's two inches to the left, one where he's slightly older. You know, I mean, it, it's just endless, really. <laughs> Literally endless. Or as near to endless as makes no odds, really. But that's what you'd have to take on board if you, if you um, did the parallel and said that the universe is just combinatorial in the way that the, li the books in the Library of Babel are just combinatorial collections of characters on page. Uh, but the universe, I don't think, and, and presumably the multiverse that exists, isn't just combinatorial. We don't live in a, in a world or in a universe in which there is a randomly selected set of atoms and molecules just thrown together. It, it, it's, it's arrived, the one that I'll exist in at least, and I'm presuming the one that you exist in if you're watching this video, the one that I exist in is one that's arrived into the condition it's at through a set of processes, um, physical processes, chemical processes, uh, biological processes ultimately, and maybe other processes as well, mathematical, psychological, who knows, what other kinds of processes. Uh, I think there's probably an argument to be made that those processes could have gone a different way. You know, just like a chess game, you know, the, the, part, the, the pieces of the chess set, or within a chess game, have got certain, you know, there are a certain number of pieces and they are allowed certain moves, but, uh, but they can go in a whole range of different ways. There are a large number of possible chess games that can be played uh, without breaking the rules and without... You know, imagining, imagining imaginary statues of the amazing atheist on Mars in, in chess. So similarly, I think um, it, 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 it seems viable to me that the universe could have gone a different way. And probably, in my, in my opinion, this is just unfounded opinion, in my opinion, probably has gone lots and lots of different ways. There probably are lots of different universes in which slightly different uh, decisions isn't the right word, but slightly different paths were taken at certain points all following the, the possible laws of physics and chemistry and biology. Uh, but that doesn't mean to say there's an infinite number. And I think it's quite unlikely that one of those paths would have led to chocolate statues and the amazing atheist on Mars. I'm not absolutely sure of that, but I think that's unlikely. Uh, but there could well have been universes which just didn't produce Earth at all, or didn't condense out of gas at all. You know, if the variables at the Big Bang were slightly different, the uh, you know stars and constellations would never have um, uh, have condensed out of that hot gas. So it seems perfectly viable to me that there could have been a bit of a variation, and there was a and there is a parallel universe somewhere supervenient to this one in which it didn't happen, and probably lots of others in which you know the laws were as set up at the beginning were followed absolutely. Uh, but just led to slightly different conclusions. The chess game was played slightly differently. So working that back into the Library of Babel, the Library of Babel, to correspond with the multiverses I'm describing it now, wouldn't be infinite in quite the same way. It would still be as big as, as, near, as near infinite as makes a difference. It would still be huge. It would still contain an infinity, a, a very large number of books. But it wouldn't just be that the letters and characters in all possible combinations, there would be combinations which had to make semiotic sense. They would have to be arranged in in words. Those range would ha words would have to be arranged according to some kind of grammar, um, or according to some kind of aesthetic principle to do with word art or something. I don't know. But uh, you know, the uh, those kinds of things would have to be enacted. So it wouldn't be just a series of random books with just random combinations of letters in. It would be books, all of which could be read somehow. Uh, some of which were lied, some of which were variations on the same book, but they'd all, they'd all be readable. They'd all, have, they'd all have, have meaning in them. So the search wouldn't be a search for meaning, only fragments of which were found in this infinite um, library of meaninglessness. It would be um, a cruising across, a browsing across different meanings and a movement from one meaningful text to the next meaningful text trying to um, connect, I suppose, to it trying to find um, a way for that movement to, to make sense If you haven't read the Library of Babel, by the way, you should it's absolutely brilliant like all Borges writing, it's great <laughs>